So it's 5.05 p.m. I'm calling to order the Finance Committee meeting for March 2nd, 2021. Um, and I didn't pull up my agenda before I said that. So there's just a couple little administrative things to do at the beginning um, that I wanted to do before we got started. The first is um, reviewing and approving the previous minutes. So um, I'll take a motion for that. So moved. Okay. I'll Just second it, Jeff Upton. Thanks. Um, any discussion, any changes, comments? No, okay. Um, let's do a roll call vote on that. Jeff Upton? Yes. Allison Vandervelden? Yes. Jim Cambius? Skip Olmstead? Yes. yes. Julie Chalf and I. All right, so that's unanimous. Nobody else showed up, right? No, not yet. Okay. Um, Julie, when yes. you do the roll call votes, can you just put me at the end so that I can keep up a little easier? Yes. Yeah, it'll give me an extra second to, to get everything down. All right. Um, Plan schedule of budget review going forward. So I sent y'all um, the, I, I sat down with Brenda and went through and looked at um, sort of the people we wanted to come in to talk to us about the budgets and um, came up with a draft um, list. This is sort of this is our plan, but it depends on people actually being available those dates and being able to show up and everything. Um, so what we came up with was tonight, inspections, police and library. Um, weeks from tonight would be town clerk, public works and wastewater treatment plant. Um, and then we have a suggestion. There's actually five weeks, five Tuesdays in March. So if we add one more finance committee meeting on the 30th of March, then we'll invite EMS, town office, and board of health. On the 30th, the 6th of April would be senior center education and Tritown and rec. And then um, 20th of April, we'll be able to look at the capital and look at the budget as a whole. And that leaves us a few weeks to rethink about things if necessary. Um, so that is our tentative plan. Oh, I also put down, there's a, the Frontier Regional School Committee is actually meeting tonight, unfortunately at six. So we won't be able to go to their meeting. And I, I'm just looking at the schedule. I think there should be a Deerfield Elementary meeting tomorrow night, but I don't see an agenda posted. Um, but I will um, scrounge around and see if I can find out when that's going to be and um, let everybody know once I know for sure. If you're interested in going to either of those. Um, so I'm going to stop sharing so I can see everybody. Um, I, I the, did already confirm with uh, Barbara and with Kevin for the next meeting for the 16th. Oh, good. Okay. Um, so first off, do, is it okay with everybody to meet on the 30th of March? So that's one extra meeting that we hadn't um, didn't have in our list already. Any objections? Yeah, okay. That looks like it's good. Um, and then I had written down on the agenda to look at moving the meeting on the 6th of April, but because uh, Brenda's going to be out of town, but we don't need to do that because you're going to take your laptop with you and be able to join us from out of town. Yes, and I'll, and I'll actually be gone on the 30th also. I planned my trip so that I would be settled and ready for both meetings there. Yeah. Um, so that's item four on our agenda, which we don't need to do. So we don't need to change the date. Um, so with that, I think we're ready to move into budget review. Um, Brenda, you have the list in front of you and you have our- Yeah, yes. and so we have, we have Bob Walden, our, our building inspector on, on the line here. He's here with us. 
And so we have his budgets, the payroll budget, and his uh, not speaking mute themselves. There's a lot of background noise. Um, I can share the screen, but all of you have your budget books. So is there a reason to? No. Okay. All right. So you have, if you pull up 241-5111. Really, I... I uh, I'll speak for Bob here. There really isn't anything that's changed um, other than there was um, a step increase for um, Susan and a step increase for Bob in, in our current compensation plan. Um, all of the other numbers are, are pretty much what we had last year for the number of hours that the assistant uh, inspectors worked, the electrical inspector, the plumbing, and um, who am I missing? Um, yes. So, so those are all pretty much the same as they were last year. So I don't know that there's a whole lot to talk about, but if you have questions for Bob, uh, this is the time to ask him. Um, my, I don't really have a question for Bob, except I don't think I've ever met you and I'm interested in how things have been going this year. Things have been going fine this year. I mean, it was, of course, the most different year ever, but for the most part, um, worked right through it. I mean, we did a little alternating staff in the office, so we weren't too close to each other, but everything seemed fine. Um, Permit came in fairly regularly. It wasn't terribly off year or anything like that. Yeah, we're collecting collecting pretty, you know, uh, pretty much where we should be at this point, from what I can see. And the um, the money we take in on fees on the different inspections covers the inspectors. Is that what it? Really, really it covers all of them. So, so you have um, revenues for plumbing and gas, and then you have um, uh, revenues for the electrical inspections, and then revenues for building inspection. And um, some years they cover quite well, some years they don't. And I'm sure that's that's due to um, you know taking in permits and then not doing the work until you know uh, afterwards. So you you've got that. Mm, delay, so to speak. All right. um, it looks like we've already taken in this year something around, I don't know, 150 something. Yeah, I'd, we're definitely on track to cover our own expenses. Um, so. Absolutely, yes. Beautiful. All right, do we have a motion? I'll move to... Um, recommend this budget 241-5110 um, at one, what is it, 167, 123? All right, we have a second. Jeff Upton will second it. Okay, um, any discussion? We already kind of discussed. Right? Nope, okay, um, Jeff Upton? Yes. Jim Cambius. Aye. Julie Chalfant, aye. Skip Olmstead. Yes. Allison Vandervelden. Yes. All right. Jean and Miss, next. So the next one is the uh, inspections department expense. That is um, number 241-5400. So it's on the next page. All right, do we have a motion? I'll make a motion recommend uh, account number 241 5400 
for the grand total of four thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars. That's Jeff. Second. Oh, let's get bonus. I'll second. Great. Any discussion? More questions? No. All right. Um, so roll call. Jeff Upton. Yes. Jim Cambius. Aye. Julie Chalfin. Aye. Gip Olmstead. Yes. Allison Vandervelden. Aye. All right. Five zero zero. All right. That was, that was pretty painless, wasn't it, Bob? Yeah. Yeah, that was that was easier than I thought it was. <laughs> Thanks for joining right, well, us, Bob. It's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Thanks, Bob. All right. So the next budgets on the list are um, the police budgets, and I know I see John's here. So we could start with police payroll, which is 210-5110. And that total should be 933,159. All right, which is up a good bit from last year. So, um, John, you've sent out a couple emails describing the issues going on. Um, do you want to recap that or talk about it at all? Yeah, sure. It's, it's definitely going to be an interesting one to five years for us. Uh, we had the criminal justice reform bill signed into law, which was 129 pages, December 31st of 2020. And one of the dramatic impacts of it is, is it creates one training standard for police officers. There's no longer going to be a part-time reserve police academy that's 360 hours. All new police officers will have to go to the 960 hour full-time recruit class. Excuse me. And before we even appoint them, we actually have to have them take a state exam that's certified by the post commission, the police officer standards and training commission. They then have to pass a post oral board not an oral board with Deerfield PD or the select board or, or a citizens group or anything like that. Uh, they have to go through a psychological a fitness test, complete the full-time police academy before we can even hire them. So there's some amazing parts of the criminal justice reform bill uh, creating the post standards that allows for certification and decertification of police officers. We all know that there are some uh, police officers out there that should not be out there. And that's one of the amazing parts of this bill. One of the downsides is, is it's depersonalizing small town policing. It no longer allows us to have the ability to grab local people, stick them in a part-time police academy and see how well they work out and represent the citizens in Deerfield for a year, two, three years. And see their hours and their work dedication in that true distinctive personality um, and then ultimately pick from that group our next full-time hire. So the unintended consequences that I think a lot of legislators uh, did not pick up on is this is in fact going to eliminate part-time policing. We rely on part-time police officers to backfill anywhere from 40 to 90 shifts a month. Depending on a quiet month, it's about 40. That's, uh, that's your January, February. There's not a lot of vacation time. June, July, August, September, there could be 60 to 90 part-time shifts a month. And after July 1st, once we start to lose part-time people, we no longer can replace them unless they are in fact full-time certified. So your full-time police officers that are retired are gonna be a hot commodity. A lot of communities are gonna to look to use them, but a lot of people getting out of law enforcement don't want any part of continuing with it. They, they have enough post-traumatic stress sitting in the back of their brain that they really just don't wanna continue it. So it's a very um, new time for us that chiefs all across the state are trying to navigate. Uh, this is um, 
not money that I really wanted to write into the budget. I'd rather be writing in for additional community services, uh, the senior center, community outreach, but literally to maintain the same policing standards that we have today with two people on the road, 24 seven, we eventually, and not too distantly, are gonna start to lose part-time people. Deerfield PD is a training ground. We always have been a training ground for state police, for other area agencies, for the FBI, Secret Service, DEA. Uh, our people go everywhere. Uh, literally the, the Secret Service recruiter, I have to throw him out of my office because he wants our roster to pick and choose our people. So yeah, I got to throw John out of the station every time he comes in. It's a, it's a compliment, but it's a curse. So once we cycle out our workhorses, our, our bottom three to five part-time people, it's going to sincerely inhibit how we've been conducting business. Our overtime is going to jump up dramatically. And we are going to have to look at more full-time people. And what I can tell you is, Deerfield, you're not alone. This is everywhere in the Commonwealth. Boston utilizes 600 part-time police officers. Aguam uses them for Six Flags. Westside uses them for the Big E. The Cape and Islands use them as traffic police officers. The Berkshires, Franklin County, Central Mass, all the way out to Eastern Mass uses reserve intermittent part-time cops. And chiefs across the state are tearing their hair out. And now finance committee, select boards, town managers are as well. So this is not an easy one. So the way I worded it to the select board, it is in fact eliminating basic EMTs. It's requiring everybody to be a paramedic. There's no longer LPNs. You basically mandated RNs. Instead of volunteer fire departments where somebody could have firefighter one, you're mandating everybody as the full-time fire academy before they can show up and fight a fire. That's what they did to us in law enforcement. Yeah. Allie, I see your hand up. Yeah, um, can you just point out which line items you've included these increases in? Is it spread out throughout or is it located in? in so the, the biggest reason for the increase is if you go down about maybe 10 or 12 lines from the top, you're gonna see officer on the next line over, it says new position. I put it for an additional full-time police officer. On the far right column, you're gonna see the amount is 49, 611. So when you look at an 8.59% increase, that dramatically is part of it. That's probably five or 6% of it right there alone. Everything else is your standard contractual um, increases and just standard year for us. Next year will be a contract negotiation year. So that dramatic five or 6% overage bump is because of that additional creation of a full-time spot. And I have another question, um, which is, has there been a conversation with like the select board about, I mean, obviously this budget is, as you just explained, is what's required to maintain the current service. But has there been a discussion with the select board about, about the service needed and wanted? I mean, I'm just wondering if, not to say that we, we need less police service, but I'm just wondering if that's been part of the conversation already and we haven't heard of it or um, when it comes to the end of the budget season, I, just, I would just sort of want to know whether that conversation has already existed or, or whether it's something that should come up if the budget turns out to be, you know, 9% 9, 9 over across the board and we can't afford it. Absolutely. So the public, uh, discussion has not taken place. I can tell you the private conversation has taken place. They do not want to reduce services within the community. Um, eventually, we may want to take a look at a regional approach and see if there's a cost effective solution there. But as of right now, the word I've got from the board is they do not want to lower services. Have you had any discussions about um, regionalization or other methods of reducing the cost of this? We haven't gone down that road yet. Everything's so new with this. 
all this is the last 60 days. People are still trying to interpret it. Uh, they're looking at a bridge academy for part-time folks to bring them up to the single standard. Yes, Municipal Police Training Committee is working on that right now. Uh, we have a meeting on it next Thursday with Mass Chiefs, with the Executive uh, Director for the Municipal Police Training Committee, the Secretary of the Executive Office of Public Safety and Security. It's The whole state is in a uh, quandary right now because it's amazing the amount of part-time folks out there being utilized. So is the um, restriction against it, your, is the change that everybody has to have the full-time training or is it also that you're not allowed to have any part-time people? No, you can have part-time folks. They have to be full-time certified. And if they're full-time certified, they're probably gonna be looking for a full-time job somewhere else. Unless yeah. they're retired. Yeah. yeah. James? Okay. Yeah, I have a question. Um, this is going to sound a little weaselly, but um, I assume that this requirement is for police officers, correct? Yes. Are some of the duties that are currently performed by Deerfield police officers, could they be offloaded to, you know, special super cross examples or whatever, who would not be police officers and thus not subject to that restriction? Like I'm thinking traffic control at the craft fair and whatnot. Yeah, that's a question that's often brought up across the United States and it requires a more broad spectrum approach because for the last 50 years, legislature has constantly made police officers the end all be all when there was not another solution. So it requires a step back. And my hope is that eventually the federal government along the lines of Obama did maybe President Biden will form a additional 21st century policing reform where they will study all this across the United States and figure out what police officers should and should not be responding to. Because I can tell you our phones ring off the hook and we never tell people in my 27 and a half years, no, we do not handle that. And I think that that is an unacceptable statement. I know other departments in Deerfield. I know other departments across the county will tell people we don't do that. Well, in Deerfield Police Department, we don't say that. We help anybody and everybody that comes across our platform to the best of our abilities. Police officers have been social workers since the day of inception of policing. We have been the conduit for society forever. We de-escalate on a daily basis. We deal with psychology on a daily basis. We deal with crisis services on a daily basis. But you, you are spot on. We do need to take a step back, but it's not individual community based. It has to be broad spectrum approach, and it has to be from the federal government down to the state governments to say, how can we do this more efficiently, effectively? What's criminality? What's mental health? And what can we pass up to other service agencies? Because other service agencies out there are not following up nearly the way they should be. And that's one of our frustrations in policing. We refer cases over, and literally, you, you'd get more satisfaction running headfirst into a wall. Chief, Jeff Upton question. Jeff. iPad. Yes. Yeah, On this new position is this in in anticipation of losing the part-time officers in uh the hours and what they cover yes it would ultimately be a reduction in what we're paying out the part-time officers so one of the things our fiscal manager already tried to beat me up in my office her name's brenda hill was to see if we could reduce other areas of the budget to accommodate for this position and one of my concerns with that is we eventually, instead of paying $25,000 a year in overtime or less, I think the finance committee is pretty well aware that uh, overtime is a sin word in my book. Uh, we're going to be paying a lot more of it. It, it. If we can't staff those shifts, it's going to come to the point where a lot of agencies out there, they just pay overtime. We're going to hit that point as well. So instead of paying $18 an hour for a part-time officer, you're going to be paying an overtime rate for an officer to staff a shift at $40, $45 an hour. So the ramifications of this bill have some, some negative uh, outreach. 
So that's, so you're expecting that the shift coverage, um, so the shift coverage, that's the, the part-time people? Yes. Line item? Yes. And so you expect, so where's the, oh, is extra hours, is that the overtime? Uh, no, nope, overtime's on its own line item. And extra hours has- Oh, I see, overtime pay, okay. Yeah. Yep, extra hours has usually been for specialized events because Deerfield's the little hub community and constantly okay. there's specialized events. And it's amazing what happens on a weekly basis. Just last night with a 60, 70 mile an hour windstorm, all of a sudden you start adding a third cruiser for eve shift and midnight shift and day shift today, and there's three shifts right there. So mm -hmm. now you look at $200 a shift, $600 out of your budget is gone because we had a windstorm just due to weather. So you haven't changed the shift coverage numbers given the, the part-timers maybe, and they're not gonna go away all of a, all of a sudden. It's gonna be like a, a tiered thing as they sort of leave or time out or, or whatever else, right? Because the, the training. Yeah, it, it totally depends. I lost two guys to Irving Police Department in the last four weeks. So. State police is giving an exam. They're running back-to-back -back academies this year. They're giving an exam in six weeks from now. I, by this summer, by the time this law takes effect in July or even October 1st, I could lose another two to four part-time people, maybe even five part-time people, and that will dramatically handicap the agency. So one of the things you guys are going to look for, because you're meticulous, you're amazing at what you do, naturally sitting on the finance committee, is you're going to look for black and white answers of how to cover shifts, what makes sense, and there's no rationale to set right now. This is so fluid and moving. I mean, I can do what other agencies do. Um, there's other agencies in Deerfield that pay out three times my overtime I pay a year. But I try and hold it down, and I try to be cost effective this criminal justice reform bill has literally handicapped myself doing that in every chief across the state. And I can tell you, you're gonna be reading it in the newspapers with finance committees in Franklin County, you're gonna be reading it all across the state. John? Yep. Yeah, uh, who pays to train a new police officer? The part-time police academy, when somebody came to me and was interested in becoming a part-time police officer, they would pay the $2,000 fee to go to the academy, and they would train for that 360 hours on their own. So until the time in which we hired them, they were considered what we would call a self-sponsor, and there would be zero cost to the town. They would come to us with first responder, with CPR, with a part-time police academy, um, fully certified and then we would stick them in a field training officer program and start to pay them a training rate of $15 an hour until they graduated phase three of training at which point they would jump up to $18 an hour as an introductory part-time cop so after July 1st everybody we hire is going to have to be full-time unless they're a retired cop there, there's no hiring really part-time people anymore so that I assume if that's the case, then every chief in the state is going to be turning to the state and saying, we need more people and you guys need to train them. Okay. That, the training will take place. It's a matter of who's going to pay for it. Well, that was my question, actually. Yeah, the Municipal Police Training Committee and the Executive Office of Public Safety and Security is estimating the criminal justice reform bill is going to cost the state 30 to 40 million dollars a year in which our legislative delegation has directly told us there is no appetite on Beacon Hill to give any additional funding for police officers a year. To so do in-service a year for 27,000 police officers, 27,000, our budget is $4 million a year. We have police academies in this state that don't have working bathrooms. Recruits have to walk across the street in Reading to use the restroom. So when somebody goes from part-time to full-time and they get that additional full-time training, who pays for that? <laughs> That's one of the questions is, is the state initially going to fund that through a grant program 
or are we going to be responsible for that 300 additional hours at $18 an hour? Is there a fee for it? Uh, if, they get, if they require EVA, the emergency vehicle operation course, do I have to give them a cruiser for one, two, three, five days? Who's going to pay for that gas, the brakes, the tires on the cruiser? All these so questions. So who does are, that? Are, I mean, in the past, like last year, if you had somebody go from part-time to full-time, how did that work? We, uh, we would pay for them to go to the full-time recruit academy. Yep. But it was not nearly as often because we would utilize part-time folks. We'd cycle that, that bottom five crowd of part-time people constantly. And they paid for their own training. We'd use them for one to three years. We'd train them, train them well. They'd get a great reputation. We'd use them for 10 to 12 shifts a month apiece to backfill at $18 an hour, not 45 for an overtime rate. And in two years, they may jump to state police, but no harm, no foul. We save money. That's no longer possible after July 1st. There's one academy pending that graduates May 22nd. Those uh, personnel in that class have five weeks to be hired by a police department or that $2,000 academy, 360 hours of time they dedicated is null and void. The only way you are grandfathered in is if, yeah, is if you are appointed prior to July 1st working as a police officer. So every single one of those has five weeks to be appointed or that academy is null and void. And this is just the transition period. I mean, it has to be done, but it's a matter of how do you do it fairly and equitably? Julie? Um, yeah, yeah I'm Rocky. Gonna hold, um, I'm going to hold public comment until the end. Okay. Um, okay. I don't want to drag the meeting out for too long. Okay. Thank you. Possible. Um, any Jeff other, Upton. Uh, go ahead, Jeff. Jeff Upton. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I would just like to comment. Uh, obviously, all police departments are going to be caught between a rock and a hard place here, and it's it's kind of a little unnerving when you see uh, something jump up like eight and a half percent. But at the same time, the select board did mention to all departments they'd like to uh, maintain level services. And I think this is one service uh, that I believe probably most town people feel pretty comfortable having uh, as, far as, as far as the coverage that we receive. So it's, it's a it's a tough thing to do, but the way I look at this is, uh, you know, the new position, if it's going to be replacing uh, part-time officers uh, through no choice of the chiefs, it's something that I think we have to seriously take a look at. And if, if uh, people are unhappy with it, they can bring it up at the annual town meeting. So with that said, I would make a motion to uh, recommend the account number of 210-5110 police payroll for a grand total of $933,159. Second. Before we, can I? Yeah, just so it's time for discussion yeah. now. Go ahead, Skip. Uh, I assume you've had some discussion, John, with the selectmen about the budget. What feedback have you gotten from them? Uh, the feedback that I've got is that they want level service budgets. I think that they are trying to be proactive about that. Uh, our select board is setting up a joint meeting with Franklin, Hampshire, Hamden, Berkshire, and Barnstable county select boards, mayors, town administrators, police chiefs, legislative delegation on March 25th to discuss the Criminal Justice Reform Act and its massive far-reaching financial ramifications on small, medium, and quite frankly, large size communities across the Commonwealth. Because there are several unintended consequences. Like I said, 80% of the bill is amazing. The financial implications on our communities is quite extensive. So I think the select board's very open-minded. 
They, uh, they have not given me a firm go ahead of, we want an additional full-time body or we're against a full-time body. That is something that I need to discuss with them. And we can figure this out as we go. You know, if, if the money's not there, I get it. I, I'm just trying to be fair and accurate. I'm on year nine. I'm not here to sit here and jump up dramatic increases, but I'm ripping my hair out like everybody else. I actually Jeff, would like to hold off on, hang on just a sec, Jeff. Jeff Upton again. Hold on, Jeff. Um, okay. I would like to hold off on this line item until later in the budget process. Um, until we have the whole, like we don't even have the school budget yet and there's rumors that that's going up and stuff. And um, I, I'd like to just, my personal opinion, I'd like to not vote this tonight and hold it maybe until after that meeting on the 25th that you're talking about and until we have the school budget in hand. Um, but we can hold on to that. Jeff, go ahead. I was just gonna suggest the same thing. Uh, as far as with that additional information, I was going to suggest that we could uh, take that recommendation of the budget off and simply uh, put this on hold until we receive further information after that meeting and uh, just put this off to vote this budget later on. All right, any parliamentary help? How do we make a motion to unmove a motion? <laughs> I think you could amend it or you could, um, or we could. You move to table I it. Can... Move to table it. Okay. Do we have Actually, a Actually, yes. Yeah. Why don't you, Jeff, why don't you just withdraw your motion? I, I, I Jeff Upton, will withdraw my motion as, as far as recommending budget 210. 5110 for nine hundred thirty three thousand one hundred and fifty nine dollars at this time and recommend to put this on hold yep so ali would would have have to withdraw her second and then you're correct yeah, i will withdraw my second <laughs> yep now you're second good withdraw. Is this, and I'm not offended um, so we can still all. leave this open for discussion for another second are we good with holding off for a month or so oh that's 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 fine with me and and I suspect this is not going to be the only budget that uh, we will want to do something similar with so right prepare for a long right. night the day before the hit town meeting We've done that yeah. before. So. so Julie, the one thing I didn't budget for in here is the nine cops that will require the Bridge Academy, whether they're, you know, twelve oh. or $15,000 a piece. <laughs> um, your initial grandfathered period, I know, Skip, thanks, mute your mic. So uh, your, uh, your initial grandfathered period actually is alphabetical by your last name. So a person with the last name of Baker will get a one-year waiver. A person with the last name of Zamoyski will get a three-year waiver. And to complete that 250 hours, that 300 hours of time, it's not really fair to have one person have a year and then another person have three years. So we're trying to work um, to see if they would amend it to at least give all part-time people three years. I think budgetary-wise, it would help us. It would factor in a lot more. It would have helped us if they really did a five-year rollout of this and canceled the part-time program in a year or two from now. So the town's had really time to digest this, but it is what it is. I'm making the best out of it. You need to hire a bunch of Zs out of that part-time academy. You know? <laughs> so there's there's actually I have one other question. The Quinn bill bumped up a bunch this year. Is that, did somebody get a master's or something? Is that what happened? Jen got a master's degree. Rissa started her, uh, she got her associates in working on her bachelor's degree. Um, yes, we've had some movement with education in the agency, which I always encourage. Yeah. yeah. That's great. Okay. Any other questions from the finance committee on this line item? No. All right. What's next? Uh, police department expense, which is 210 $5,400. And you'll, you'll see the only increase in that budget is for uh, a copier replacement. 
So the photocopier is a one-time expenditure. We actually, if you want, uh, we can always move it to a single article item. So it's broken out of the expense budget. The reason I put it in the expense budget um, was to note it within the budget cycle. It was originally on the capital improvement plan for years and years and years. About three years ago, we rent, uh, we changed the CIPC bylaws at town meeting and we upped it from $5,000 a year to 10. So the photocopier that had been identified on there for seven years, three years ago, came off because it was about a $9,000 copier. I literally looked at it last year and went, Casey, why is my copier not on there anymore? And I'm, and I'm looking like, where did this go? Did somebody just like delete it in, in a transition? And then I'm looking through the CIPC bylaws and I'm like, oh, okay. So somehow I need to identify at the 10 year mark, we need to set money aside for a copier. I'd rather do it through a special warrant article so it can sit there for a year or two so I can burn this current copier up even more. But the minute it starts to become a problem child, we can go ahead and just replace it. That would be my thought. I wanna try and get as many road miles as we can off the current copier. But so I put it in here, um, you know, Brenda, Casey, as you guys are drafting up the budget, feel free to break it out, put it in its own separate line so it's not reoccurring. And basically the, the budget is status quo. I was gonna say, I'm fine to leave it in the budget unless the finance committee wants to do something else with it, but. It seems like it's operational costs to me, which would go up or down a little bit each year. So I think it's just, if it's not capital, it's operational. Right. Look at it each year. You'll have to remember to look at it when you don't need it. Cause we're gonna ask you why you need a second copier next year. But Redundancy I backup. Yeah, I won't remember, but Skip will, and Julie will. <laughs> so only, I, I actually, I don't have a problem with it being on here either. The only reason, I guess, from a financial perspective of not having it on here is that this gives a big plus up to the budget so that next year the 2.4% increase is bigger and we have, um, maybe that's good, maybe that's bad, but um, there's more window there. You could kind of you could kind of liken it to let's say the town clerk's budget, where some years you have the big election, some years you don't, or some years you have the actuarial costs, some years you don't. So it goes on and it comes off. Um, okay. I think for nine thousand dollars, it's it's a drop in the bucket as far as that goes. I'd say just leave it in there. The other possibility to make it ten thousand dollars and move it back into the capital budget. Uh, I would rather pay less. Skip, did anybody tell you your mic's broken? What was that? Did anybody tell you your mic's broken? <laughs> Sorry, John, I couldn't hear you any longer. <laughs> so we don't actually have I a was going yet. to I was to going to mention that if you keep an eye on on the prices of the copy machines and if you can do for a year or whatever if those prices go up and they do tip over ten thousand dollars it can come back to the capital improvement committee but it has to be over ten thousand dollars thank you jeff all right do we have a motion <coughs> i'll make a motion to recommend the police department expense budget 210-5400 at 119300 i'll second it all right, any more comment? No. Uh, Jeff Upton? Yes. Jim Cambius? Aye. Julia Chalfin? Aye. Skip Olmstead? Yes. Allison Vanderbilt? Yes. We had one more person joined by phone. That's not a finance committee person, is it? 522-9245? No. Okay. What's next? Uh, the cruiser, mm -hmm. which is the next page. It's 210 5800. Yep. The only thing we need to verify is if Green Energies Committee is going to write in the uh, $5,000 grant like they did this year for us towards the hybrid cruiser. Um, so far, those cars are holding up okay. We now have two of them on the road. And uh, usually year three or four is when we will start to see issues. So in the next year, we should 
if there are concerns, they should start to be identified. As of right now, those are amazing cars. Uh, officers getting used to them find a little bit of a learning curve, but after about six or eight weeks, they start to really like them. I think it's like anybody else in this world. When the car shuts off on you on North Main Street, the first time it happens, you're like, oh my God, what just happened? So, yep. And now they're actually starting to really enjoy them. So uh, I think we're going to start to see a true gas savings in the next year. 18 months as car two cycled in. And if we get car three online, I think we are actually going to start to see some pretty good savings in gas. You don't see it initially because what happens is when those cars are brand new, they're cycled into the senior full-time people and they're shared between two officers only. The new kids are not allowed to touch them. So they're not the high mileage people and they're not out there doing a ton of traffic stops like the newer police officers. Generally, they're broken in um, in a much more reasonable manner than if we gave them to a new kid. So, yep, I think in the next year, we're gonna start to see a good gas savings. Last year we voted 55,000, but at the end of the day, we actually took it down $5,000 when Green Energy Committee said they would uh, they would write that $5,000 into the grant and they did get the grant, so that was good. And we can kind of leave it to Brenda to adjust that if they're willing to do that again. We could just vote the whole thing in the agreement that, yep, we just touch base with Green Energies and figure that out. Do we have a motion? Go ahead, Jeff. Jeff Upton, I'll make a motion for the police department cruiser, uh, count number 210-5800 for a total of $55,000. Seconded. All right, any further discussion? No? Okay. Um, roll call vote, Jeff Upton? Yes. Jim Cambius? Aye. Julie Chalfin? Aye. Skip Olmstead? Yes. Allison Vanderbilt? Yes. All right. What's next? We have the emergency, uh, excuse me, the uh, canine control budget. The next. 292-5400 should be the last page in that section, in section two, in your books. Okay. Yep, so K-9 Control is a shared regional animal control officer with the towns of Montague and the city of Greenfield. Greenfield pays 50%, Montague pays 25 and the town of Deerfield pays 25 What you see on here is um, general estimate for salary. Benefits jumped up. I even confirmed that with the Greenfield chief. This position is based out of Greenfield. You see a, a five thousand dollar jump up in benefits. Where I went, this is going to red flag with my finance committee. I need you to verify this. Yes, and yeah, <coughs> no, Robbie Haig did verify from his um his folks that that is an accurate number. I I don't know what jumped with the city of Greenfield, but for benefits to jump up five thousand dollars, I certainly went okay like we need some explanation so at the end of the day you do see uh an increase of about thirteen hundred dollars which with this line item is about a six point seven six percent increase for that regional animal control officer oh john Peresky joined us hi john oh good John is muted. All right. Um, I don't think we have a motion yet on this one. I'll make a motion to approve the canine control at 20485 Second. Second it. <clears throat> Any further discussion or questions? The only question I have is salary did not change. Yeah. No, we actually had that listed high last year, so that salary can stay as is. Okay. Would that 
would that benefit jump be maybe going from a, a single to a family plan for health? It certainly could be, which we uh, obviously I couldn't confirm or deny that in an open meeting. Uh, okay. All right. Any other discussion? Yeah. All right. Jeff Upton? Yes. Ambius? Aye. Julie Chalfin? Aye. Skip Olmstead? Aye. John Pareski? John, you're muted. I came in too late. I don't don't even okay. know what you're talking about. All right. <laughs> We're on canine control, 292 5400. But just, you can abstain. <laughs> abstain. Um, Allison yeah. Vanderbilt. Okay. So five zero one. All right. Um, so I, I held off from. Um, public comment until the end of the, the thing, but um, I think we have a little bit of time now. If anybody has questions for the police chief that you'd like to ask, um, we can do a couple minutes. Rocky, go ahead. Oh, God. Uh, in my right at, uh, in hearing that you just hired two uh, new police officers, were they hired as the part-timers, like you said? We hired four. We hired two people about five or six weeks ago. And last Thursday, we hired two additional. I'm trying to build up our roster the best I can before July 1st. So to extend that um, that wall that's coming at us. And they were hired as part-time? Yes. OK, so they only have the hours. Yep, they have that 360-hour reserve intermittent academy. Okay, thank you very much. I just wanted to clarify that. Oh. Yep. Yep. Thank Skip, you. you may have to mute your mic again. Lou Vincent, you had a question earlier, also, right? Um. Yeah, I just wanted to um, kind of support the reform bill in in one way, which is that we're going to have full-time trained officers, which is a plus for us, right? Like we want to have better trained officers out there. So one of the questions I have is, you know, I think many, many communities are looking at this right now is we don't want to be paying overtime. You know, we don't want to have all these extra expenses for overtime for officers. Isn't this the perfect moment for us to look at reallocating or possibly having DPW taking on some of the traffic or roadside work that the police department's doing now or creating a new division where we we're not paying, you know, a 26 to $40 an hour police officer rate for jobs that maybe don't require a police officer. So I guess that would be something that I'm just like as a citizen saying, is this not the perfect organic moment to kind of open our eyes to those possibilities? Yeah, so Lou, before you jumped on, I addressed that. My recommendation was the same thing that President Obama did that Biden should be looking at. We should be looking at reinvigorating the 21st Century Police Reform Committee. And part of that reform committee should be looking at all avenues of policing, what we should be and should not be dealing with. Because over time, police departments have become the de facto catch all for everything in society because we never say no and we're sued when we say no. So individualized communities coming up with programs that don't fit what the law states is always a challenge for us. It really has to be at a state level. It has to be at a federal level. We have some of the smartest minds in the world in this country, and we really need our federal delegation and our president to take a leadership role in this and try and figure this out of where law enforcement is headed in this country, what we should be covering and what we should not be. Because I can tell you right now, the first phone call that I get that I have to explain to somebody, we don't handle that type of incident anymore. That's not gonna be pretty. Like it's very easy to say that police officers should not be covering 
certain type of situations, but I can far describe to you on telephone calls or in person, go ahead and explain that to somebody in crisis. Well, I'm not talking about crisis clearly. I'm talking about things like roadside assistance that, you know, that when a tree is down and the cops are standing around, like those kinds of jobs that we might be able to consider like time-wise, budget-wise, like farming them out to a different, you know, a different um, occupation. Yeah, no, and I agree with you. So what we did about eight or nine years ago is we tried flaggers within the Commonwealth and people wanted to get police officers off of details. So they went to flaggers on details, but what they realized was under prevailing wage laws, flaggers are $44 an hour. And on top of that, the companies that hired them and trained them, certified them and issued liability insurance on them, charged an additional $15 an hour for benefits and all that criteria. So they were billing a flagger at $10 an hour higher than a uniformed police officer and traffic is not nearly as likely to behave as well with a flagger a highway worker as a uniformed police officer. So it literally, it came back to bite us. We, so we've got to make smart choices in how we do things. I don't know that our select board has any um, ongoing committee on this, but it might be something, I, I expect there's a lot of town interest in it. Do you know if there is any sort of ongoing conversation that Susan's residents could be part of? Well, I think the select board has encouraged residents to reach out directly to themselves and myself at any point in time. Thank you. And I, I'm more than happy to work with anybody. Um, Lou and I do have a little side working group that we're trying to assist in many different areas. And my mind's wide open, but it's not as easy said as done when the law specifically gives the police department uh, the areas and opportunities to exercise the powers under the law and not other groups. All right, Anna Lee, go ahead. Yes, Allison, in answer to your question, um, as John was saying, I have been um, working with a, a smaller subgroup to talk with him about other ways that the police budget can manage, actions to be managed. But I did send a letter to the select board and um, the, uh, the chief in terms of if the select board could facilitate a public wide meeting and I haven't yet heard a response yet to that. So if that's something that the um, finance committee would like to encourage, um, I know the, the chief is supportive of speaking with people and certainly having the finance committee backing might help a public meeting happen. Thanks. Julie? Yes, go ahead, Jeff. I'd like to respond to that. I, I, at, at the moment, I don't think that's something the finance committee should spearhead. I think that's up to the select board. Uh, I think the finance committee could join a meeting like that. Also, one other thing I'd like to remind people, it's easy to say, well, this other department could pick up and do this, that, and the next thing. But you remember that the highway department, when you listen to them, they're right out straight. They're booked. Yeah. And as far as trying to add additional duties to them would force them to look at their staffing and would force them into a situation of now do they need to hire an, an additional person. So uh, I don't know if that would be a gain, but I'd say that uh, this has to be approached with some caution, this whole topic. and not opposed to having a discussion about it but i i really think that the uh select board should be spearheading any uh open meeting all right okay um, i think we're done with the police budget items right Brenda? okay yes john thank you so much for coming Yes, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, everybody.
Yep. Um, we have a few minutes before the library needs to come on. So I thought we could go over some of those budgets that we um, that we put off last week. Yes. Um, if you want, I could share my screen and we could do those. Okay. Um, so I have them highlighted here. I, I hope I didn't miss this one. The ADA coordinator, we didn't do that one last week. I don't, I don't believe. So um, we've never spent this money in the time that I've been here, but it's one of those placeholder things. Uh, Casey did drop it to 250 for, for fiscal 22, just so we have something in the budget. And that is uh, account number 549 5400. All right, do we have a motion? I, I have that we voted that last time. Did we? Okay, so I missed it, Jeff. I yeah, I have it that we had on 21621, we voted that 600. And that was the 549-5400 for I, the ADA coordinator. I don't okay. have that in my notes, but I wondered to put that in the minutes. Do people want to check on that? I, I that's didn't what I have write on that my down. on yeah. my paperwork. I don't have any notes on mine. How about if we just make a motion to approve it now? Yeah, let's do that. I make a motion to approve account 549 5400 for $250. I'll second it. All right, any discussion? Yeah, roll call vote. Jeff Upton? Yes. Jim Cambius? Aye. Julie Chalfin? Aye. Skip Olmstead? Aye. John Bresky? Aye. Allie Vandervelden. Hi. All right. Six zero zero. I'll just change the date to three two instead of two sixteen. All right. What's next? Uh, how about the historical commission? That is account number six nine one dash fifty four hundred. They have plans for spending this as they did this year. I'm not sure how much they will spend in this current fiscal year, but um, I know they intend to do so. And uh, so I don't, he did not change it any for fiscal 22. He left it as it was. Do we have a motion? I'll, I'll make a motion to approve or recommend this uh, line item at $1,175. I'll second. All right. Any discussion? <coughs> OK, Jeff Upton? Yes. Jim Cambius. Aye. Julie Chalfant. Aye. Skip Olmstead. Aye. Don Pareski. You're muted if you said anything. Oh. Hey. Did you get me? I don't hear you. Don Pareski. Aye. Sorry. Thank you. Ali Vandervelden. If you're saying anything, you're muted. I'm muted. I can you hear me. There now? we go. Okay. I think that was a six zero zero. Yes. Great. Next. Um, so then how about Veterans Day Memorial Day expense? And that is account number six nine two dash fifty eight hundred. Um John, of course, does a great job. John says uh, managing this account. He uses um, 
other funds as he has available to him, but he uh, he does always or most always spend the entire two thousand dollars for that event. I'll recommend uh, the Veterans Day Memorial Day expense account number six nine two dash fifty eight hundred for two thousand dollars. Second. Any discussion? Hearing nothing, Jeff Upton. Yes. Jim Cambius. Aye. Julie Chalfin, aye. Skip Olmstead. Aye. John Pareski. Aye. Allie Vandervelden. Aye. All right, six zero zero. Um, do, do we have the library with us now or do we? Yeah. Oh, good. Okay. And Satu from the um, trustees is also joining us. Great. Excellent. Then I am going to, um, I'm going to stop my share if I can figure out how to do that. Nope, that's not it. <laughs> you have like a little red thing up towards the top of the screen. Oh, there it is. Right under where it Thank says, you. yeah. I, know I figured it out last week, but I couldn't figure it out this week. So. <laughs> okay, so uh, the library budget is uh, count number 610-5400. All right. Hi, Candace and Satu. Welcome. Nice to see you. Hi. Nice to see you. Satu, I told her six fifteen, so she might be just a few. Oh, yeah. I don't see. I don't see her yet. To check us out, but um, I haven't seen her come back on yet. Oh, okay. Yeah, she texted me. She thought the meeting started at five, and I, I told her uh, not to worry. She was panicked that she missed it. Oh, well, there she is. There there she comes. Is. All right. So do you want to, hi Satu, welcome. Hey, thanks Julie. Across the street. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Should just come up? Let me have to remember. Okay, um, so do you want to, Candace, talk to, about your budget at all? Yeah, I mean, pretty much if you see, um, it's pretty much level. Um, this has been approved by the trustees um, because I know that you know, because of last year with the pandemic and, and the economy such as it has been and, and may continue to be that uh, it's pretty much just level funded except for the staff getting the, um, the amounts that Brenda gave me for the, is it the cost of living? No, that's the step, going up the steps. Um, and also that every year we have to increase, we, the library, has to increase um, the amount that we send, spend on our, well, the, the amount that we spend on our books and materials has to be um, a certain percentage, 20% of the entire budget. So that just brings the budget up a little bit, but that happens every year. It's a criteria for our, us to continue to get state aid. Um, so yeah, there's, it's pretty straightforward. <laughs> yeah. So do, you, do you want me to go through it line through line or do you guys have questions? Um, anybody have questions? Candace, I do have a question. Jeff Upton? Sure. Hi. Hi. Uh, when I look down through on the, on the payroll now, are we adding a new assistant? Assistant number five? Assistant number five. Let me get there. That one was there in fiscal 21, Jeff. Pardon? It was there in fiscal year 21 in the current fiscal year. Yeah, she just basically, it's a, one of the substitutes is now working um, one Saturday a month, which is no longer a substitute, but those hours were taken away from one of the other staff people. So we have not had any increase in hours at this time. Nope. Is that, Actually, we, is that correct? 
Yes, yeah, actually, we I cut hours from all. I cut one hour um, of a staff person that worked above four hours a week um, because um, in the spring, you know, we were asked to look at our budget, and our budget was so tight that the only place I could make any cuts was staff. So, um, so I, I worked. I worked with the trustees, and we just cut an hour. And I was hoping to get that back this year, but it looks like it's uh, there wouldn't be room for that this year. So we'll just look forward to hopefully getting back to what our, you know, quote unquote, normal hours are um, next year. So at fiscal year 23. Right, correct. So everybody's been able to complete all their hours, even with, I know, and I know the library's doing a lot, even with hmm. the COVID situation here. Oh yeah, um, believe it or not, we're still really busy. And, um, you know, the, every staff person besides Julie and I, we're are working when we're open um, for curbside. And then, you know, Julie and I are, as we always have, are do a lot of like behind the scenes planning and administrative tasks. So, so really nothing has changed. <coughs> okay, that's all the questions I have. Thank you. Sure. So I don't think we have a motion yet. We may like to make a motion. Motion to recommend the Tilton Library budget um, for my bottom line here, 193, 374. I'll second it. John Pareski. Any further discussion or questions? Look, look like it. Jeff Upton? Yes. Jim Cambius. Abstain. Uh, Julie Chalfant, aye. Skip Olmstead. Aye. John Pareski. Aye. Allison Vandervelden. Allie. Aye. <laughs> we can't hear you. <laughs> you still can't hear me? Oh, now we can. Okay. I haven't changed anything. Oh, wow. <laughs> I guess. I see your mouth, but I couldn't hear you. I support. Okay. So we have a 501, it looks like, uh, on the library. All right. Um, all right. Thanks for coming. Wow. That was easy. Yeah. That was the quickest budget. Thanks for ever. joining us. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Good night. Thank you. Bye. Nice Bye. to see you. Yeah. Nice Thank to you. see you guys. <laughs> bye bye. All right. Okay. Um, we don't have uh, very many budgets left to look at. Um, I had on my list uh, that I gave uh, Julie and Allison um, the FERCOG core assessment, but I realized that none of you have the, the budget sheet because I just got the number today and printed it. <laughs> So I don't I don't know if you want to uh, approve it anyway because it's a number that it's given to us and we can't change it. But you tell me. I have it in front of me. I think. Can you screen share it, Brenda, so that we can see it? Yes. If the, I mean that would be good enough for me. If it. I oh, that would work. Yeah, I'd be happy with that. Yeah. So. Um, it's right there. So the, the FERCOG core assessment has actually um, come down from what they had uh, uh, assessed us for fiscal 21. So it's, uh, it, it's 830-5400. And the amount that they're requesting or that they're assessing us is $41,574. I'll make a motion to recommend the FERCOG core assessment. I'll second that. Any discussion? Do we know how this is calculated? I I don't. Mm -hmm. Um I was sent a sheet today. I know that there's there's two parts to it. There's um, 
a regional and a statutory section. Uh, the statutory section is the same as last year. It's the regional uh, assessment that has come down. But why, I don't know. But they brought down the budget for every town by 5.6%. Brenda? Yes. Can I make a comment? I was at the meeting, just as an as oh. informational comment. Yes, the, please, Casey. The COG decided to make, a, make a, an effort to make some changes in their budget because there were certain things that didn't have to be increased. Um, and one of those things was the regional assessment. They made a conscious effort to reduce that as, as, a, ma as a way to help the town. Um, and because again, they didn't have to make significant changes. Okay, thank you. It's hard to argue when the dollar value went down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Any other questions? Or no, my only other question, Brenda, by any chance, could you uh, email us that account so we could copy it and put it in our binders? I, I sure could do that. Otherwise, Jeff, I was, I was uh, creating piles of things to, to hand out to you. Okay, um, that'll be fine. And that was that was in that pile. I just didn't, there wasn't anything that I could think of that you had to have for tonight other than that. So um, I thought that would just okay. save, save you having to come to the town hall several times for for stuff. Right. No, that that sounds good, Brenda. Thank okay. you. I appreciate that. Great. Any further discussion? Um, let's see. You are roll call, Jeff Upton. Yes. Mike Ambius. Aye. Billy Chalfant. Aye. Skip Olmstead. Aye. John Pareski. Aye. Ali Vanderbilt. Aye. All right. You have time. It's like a six zero zero, and I heard you. <laughs> What's next? Okay. Um, reserve fund. This is uh, this is a budget that is set by the finance committee. Um, I left it at a hundred thousand, assuming you'd want to do a hundred thousand again. You have it in your books. It's in tab eleven. And it's actually account number 132-5400, but we voted as a, as a special article, so it doesn't get that in the, in the, in the warrant. Brenda? Can you talk a little bit about um, what this is used for? So the reserve fund is um, a cushion, so to speak, for the finance committee's use or when uh, there are budgets during the year that are overspent and need, um, need assistance. Um, particularly in these months right now when we can't do any transfers between appropriations, the only choice is to use the reserve fund. Um, I think I mentioned at one of the meetings, uh, I know I this is kind of a side point, but we do have two budgets that are overspent and have been overspent for the last few months. I will try to bring um, transfer requests to the next meeting for those. And that's the, um, I believe, ZBA expense. And the other one is uh, general insurance. Brenda? Yes. Brenda, which insurance is the one that's overdrawn? General insurance. Okay. Yeah, so, it's like $2,300 over. And it, I, I think looking back on it, we realized it was because of the um, the policy for the police. What's it called? The accident. Uh, I can't think of it, Carolyn. It, maybe you would. Is it injured on duty? Point. What is it? Yes. Is it injured on duty? Yes, that's it. <laughs> I'm getting old. I can't think. <laughs> Julie, I've got a question.
question or a comment that I'd like to make. Go ahead. Um, the, uh, the numbers that you have on this particular form, uh, could you revise those so that they show the, obviously not now, but in the future, so that they show the total appropriations for each one of those years? Uh, you'll see that on your separate budget sheets. That, but we normally have them in there. These are the ones that are voted. And it was, for example, 2016, we voted $80,000. Correct. So I'd like to, you, this is Warren Articles, voted separately, and it's the voted amount that we sh should be showing on that. Uh, well, this, this, this form, um, this form is, or this, well, this spreadsheet is used differently than that, Skip, so I use the actual expenditures so that so that I can reconcile back at the end of the year. Um, I don't remember doing this in the past. It's always been like this. So the, so the only column that shows the appropriation and not the spent is fiscal 21 because we're in the middle of that year. This is like the master sheet, Skip? Yes. This is I can't, uh, what was that, Carolyn? That was the one that we reference every, I mean, this is the one that's like the cheat sheet one. Yeah, it's, it's like the overall summary. Yeah. All right, do we have a motion? I don't think we do yet. I'll make a motion uh, to recommend the reserve fund Account number one three two fifty four hundred for a total of a hundred thousand dollars. I second it, John Pareski. Great. Any discussion? What happens to uh, money that's allocated that isn't spent? It goes back to free cash. Okay. Um, I, I think at this point I'm comfortable with a hundred thousand because we can always revisit at the end of the year. If we, that's right. Um, we have, any other know, the most recent years we haven't used that much, mm -hmm. um, which is good, I guess. Yeah. It's nice to have it in case there's something drastic that happens. I'm always nervous that it's not enough, but. Like Brenda says, we haven't really used that much lately. All right. Any other discussion? No. Jeff Upton? Aye. James Gambius? Aye. Julie Chalfant? Aye. Skip Olmstead? Aye. John Pareski? Aye. Allison Vernevelden? Aye. All right. It looks like 600. So the last one I have uh, on our list for tonight is the Dickinson Library Trust. Um, so that is the interest that's earned on the Dickinson Trust gets allocated the following year and 85% of it goes to the library and 15% of it goes to the uh, Frontier Library. So that's a number that's given to us by our treasurer and this year it's $2,661. So we don't have a sheet, right? Right. Brenda, can you just say 85% goes to the library and 15% goes, is that right? Goes to 15% goes to the Frontier Library and 85% goes to the Tilton Library. Okay, thank you. So this number is just the Tilton number or this is the total? This is the total. And so the 85%, uh, Candace has that in her budget, reflects that as, as money that she can spend. Good. Do we have an account number for that? There is no account number for that. Okay, that's what I thought. Make a motion to approve the Dickinson Library Trust at $2,661.
Anybody want to second that? I'll second it. All right. Uh, any further discussion? This is basically money we can't not spend. <laughs> right. Yeah. All right. Jeff Upton. Aye. James Cambius. Abstain. Julie Chalfant, aye. Skip Olmstead. Aye. John Peresky. Aye. Allison Vanderbilden. Aye. All right, so that's five zero one. Jim, you're abstaining because you're on the library. Right. Something, right? Yeah. Give a question of impropriety. All right. Um, real question for the minutes. Um, is an abstention different from a recusal for how I need to document that? Did he? Are you recusing yourself or abstaining, or is there, is there a difference? Right now? Um, that's a damn good question to which I don't know the answer. What, what was the question? I'm just, I'm, you know, because I'm writing things down for the minutes. Is a recusal needing to be differentiated from an abstention? Yes. Okay. Then well, no, that's a not. A yes, it is. A recusal is separate. A recusal is you don't participate in the entire conversation. But okay. I was. An abstention means that you abstain from the vote. And you can state your reasons or not state your reasons in my experience, James. And so is this a recusal or an abstention? I guess since I opened my mouth, it was an abstention rather than a recusal. Very educational for me. <laughs> okay. So those were the items we had on the list to talk about today. Um, any next on the agenda is items not anticipated. Anybody have anything else they want to talk about? Um, I have a couple things. Uh, yeah. First, we did get kind of a an initial budget from Frontier Regional, um, not not to be shared yet because they have their meeting. By the way, that's next week, so that's next Tuesday night on the ninth at six p.m. Right, Casey. Casey, is that correct? It's next, it's the 9th at six o'clock. I just went back and looked because I had an invitation. They are having issues with Zoom bombing. Um, so they are being, they're limiting, I mean, the school committee is limiting um, invitations. Darius had reached out to me because I have emailed him multiple times. <laughs> um, so yes, it's March 9th. I'm going to check. Julie brought this up earlier. I'm going to check to see if there is a meeting for the school, the elementary school committee on the 10th. There may be, don't quote me though, because Trevor told me he can't attend the 10th. The normal selectman's meeting would be the 10th. So that may be what it is. I will check back and send you guys. Um, I think the elementary school is 6 p.m. on the 10th. On the, on the 10th? Okay. No, that's, that's what I was thinking. That's why we're changing our selectmen's meeting because Trevor can't make it. So as soon as I have that conversation or that confirmation, I can email you guys. And if you wanted to attend, we could post a meeting for you if you thought that was necessary. And I think both will be live streamed on YouTube, right? So we can watch it via YouTube, even if we don't have this. Yep. yep. Okay. Thanks. So next week we have the town clerk treasurer collector coming to talk to us a little bit after five and then at six o'clock Kevin will be coming to talk about all of his budget or two not weeks from now week. not next week two weeks 16th. correct two weeks from today yes yep at five March March 16th yeah Oh, and John, before you came on, we added we we added a meeting on March 30th because we have a fifth Tuesday. So we're going to meet March 30th at 5 p.m. Also. These all going to be at five. Yep. Sorry about being late. I thought it was going to be six. <clears throat> I did too, so I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh, Carolyn, before you came on, we talked to um, Chief Paturic for quite a while about his budget. 
and we decided not to vote on the police personnel budget right now. We're going to save that until later after there's been more discussions about it. We'll have more information after March 5th, I think, but um, quite honestly, I, I, we, we're just guesstimating the impact. We really don't know what it's going to be at this point. Um, okay. And I, we don't know if we're going to get any help from the state. I mean, that's what we're, one of the reasons we're having this five county meeting is because we're complaining of the impact. Yeah. Um, but also we're not, just a heads up on the school. I know you're not going to be voting on the school budgets next week because they're just coming out, but the federal government, um, if the COVID-19 bill passes the federal government, the, there will be some educational funding coming down for the schools. So uh, we don't, again, we don't know how much, if it's coming direct to the schools or it's gonna go through the State Department of Education. It's not clear to me at this point, but it will be of some assistance, as same as um, uh, there'll be some assistance for our Board of Health budget which has been, is way out of whack, obviously. So um, those, just a heads up on that. I, I don't know what the impact is. We've been trying to figure it out, but no idea. Carolyn, um, yes. Barbara received some money on Monday that we have no idea. I, I contacted Shelly, but it's $7,100 from the Department of Education. And all it says is FY21 COVID prevention first payment. Yeah, I, I think that's from the CARES Act, but I'm not sure because remember we, we had submitted a whole bunch of different claims under the CARES Act. And that, that doesn't ring a bell to me about anything outstanding, does it to you? No. So I'll, I did I did email Shelly, so hopefully I'll get an answer. Okay, I'm I'm not sure if that's a combination of a couple things or it's incremental payment of another thing. So, okay, it's it's very very hard to follow all the funding tracks on this. So I'm sorry, Brenda. Okay, we're we're just going to take as much money as we can get. Yeah. And then we'll figure it out. So don't send it back. It, it's something we submitted, I'm sure. Great. Any other um, new business that we need to talk about right now? Anyway, okay. Um, next on the agenda is public comment. Is there any further public comment? Or you visit that again? hands raised. All right. I think we are ready for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All right. Uh, Jeff Upton. Yay. Jim Cambius. Aye. Julie Chalfant. Aye. Skip Olmstead. Aye. Don Pareski. Aye. Ali Vanderbilt. Aye. All right. Six zero zero. Thank you very much, everybody. We will meet again in two weeks.